All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's town board meeting for the County Region Town Board. Uh, we'll open tonight's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Councilwoman Karen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for Confirm that the meeting was properly advertised. Yes, it was. Okay, thank you. I can call the roll. Councilwoman Karen May. Present. Councilman Terry Kennelly. Present. Councilwoman Annalyn Rudolph. Present. Supervisor Gary Simpson. Present. Right, thank you. Uh, there is a folder with written communications in circulation, so uh, that will be passing through uh, the audience tonight. Uh, we do have. Uh, would like to take a minute and welcome special guests. We have uh, Mayor Palumbo from the city of Canandaigua. We have uh, city manager John Goodman with us, and we have Chief McNara and many members of the Canandaigua Fire Department. Thank you all for joining us tonight, and uh, thanks for being here with us. Uh, would like to take a minute and recognize birthdays for this next cycle. So we have Bob Wurtz on the 12th. September 12th, Larry Tyler also on the 12th, Amanda Van Lincoln on the 16th, Jeff Minner on the 19th, Jean Christman on the 23rd. Happy birthday, Jean. Thank you. Same birthday as my wife, so I'll have to uh, remember that and get you something to do. Please do. Okay. Um, Amanda Cl uh, Cleanhammer on the 24th, Ken Brockett on the 24th, Karen Denae on the 26th. It's just like a festival of birthdays right now. Uh, Sam Moore on the 27th. And then in October, we have John Noble on the 2nd, Edith Davy on the 7th, Austin Mincer on the 8th, and uh, it can be with Jared Simpson on the 10th. I'll just skip over that one here. Chris Bonda on the 12th, Jeff Miller on the 14th, and David Emery on the 14th. So lots of all birthdays going on. So happy birthday to everyone. All right, that brings us to the actually before we'll go to the first privilege of the floor first. Is there anyone who would like to be heard at this time? Mr. West. Can I respectfully ask for a 30 second joke? Do we need a motion for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I just found out that you guys are meeting tonight, right? I, you know, so what happened to next Monday? I hear that you're going over to see not the Queen's yet. funeral. That's what I think you're doing. Is that true or not? It, is going to the Bills game maybe? What's happening next Monday is not important at this time. There might be seats on the 30 yard line, second row. The Available building. to you. Huh? Yeah. So, yeah. But I thank you everybody for your flexibility. Um, I will not do that again on September 19th this year. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> with that, we can start. Uh, I'm opening up with a couple of questions for the Canandaigua Town Board from the Canandaigua community. And I don't expect answers, are you just thought provoking? Is there an identified third party that you're in conversation with to secure the property from RSM? If there is an identified party, what are they after? And what will they pay? What does the town of Canandaigua get for investing X point X million in this project? Has the town of Canandaigua town board shared the available information with community members so they can understand the current situation and offer their work and thoughts? Canandaigua Lake is the largest fundamental, has the largest fundamental impact to the quality of life in the whole area, especially in the town of Canandaigua. We must cherish it, respect it, protect it. Without Canandaigua Lake, the town of Canandaigua would not be what it is today. I believe the town board has secured adequate financing resources to buy the MSM parcels without having to raise any added property tax. Well done by the town board. Let's look back 34 years. And I think you'll find a determined group of leaders who intrinsically knew what was the right thing to do. I think we can all recognize the 33 to 34 years that have passed since the town of Canandaigua board fortunately had the insight and determination to secure Camp Ananda and convert it into Ananda Park. Another well done for those gentlemen and ladies 40 years ago. Uh, we have had in place for those 30 plus years and before I believe, the comprehensive plan and update plan process. 
Those are tools that are really important. Every comprehensive plan and comprehensive plan update since the Ananda Park purchase has a top level priority to secure added lakefront from the, for the citizens of the town of Canandaigua. In fact, in the 2020 comprehensive plan update, Canandaigua Lake significantly affects seven of the 10 focus areas. I am looking forward to hearing from the town board members, not again tonight, on how they can apply today's opportunity and measured against the 2020 comprehensive plan update. I believe town of Canandaigua has spent an average of over 1000 hours per year working with both paid staff and unpaid volunteers, parentheses, think of all that committee work that gets done at no cost or minimal cost in keeping the comprehensive plan and updates current. At no time in the past 30 plus years did the acquisition of lakefront property ever fall from its top perch for the greatest benefit for the entire Canandaigua community. I'm confident once the town board looks at the RSM opportunity by testing it against the 2020 comprehensive plan update, they will have a powerful tool to evaluate the merits of this RSM project and the Canandaigua community will benefit greatly. Don't overthink this. Let's get this done for the town residents. Thank you. And I did not include your initial remarks of your three minutes, just for the record. Sure. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but anybody else like to be heard at this time? All right, that takes us to, oh, wait, wait. sorry, go ahead. Um, so if you can use the microphone so people on Zoom can hear you. Uh, you have, if you can state your name and your address, and you have three minutes. Uh, my name is Stefan Petronsky. I'm at 4094 on Alinda Drive. Um, and this is my daughter, Tegan Petronsky. Um, yeah, and we really just wanted to come and really speak in favor of this. Um, you know, there is uh, there's a finite resource of lakefront property. And the greater that we can allow access to the most people is really a benefit for all. And so we just really want to come out and speak in favor of that. And did you have anything you wanted to say? Yeah. I feel like we should um, do this because if like it would be good. So um, we are helping the earth because pollution is very big right now and we want to help stop pollution and so if we're driving our car down to the lake then we're using gas and polluting the earth but if we have if we make a path to walk it down then um we won't be using any gas and we won't be polluting the earth okay. well thank you we just really want to speak in favor the All right. Thank you so much. And thank you, Chief and Keegan, for being here. That's very brave to do that. I think does Keegan get an award for the youngest person? I think so. No, you that's not you are not the youngest. <laughs> and briefest. Yes. <laughs> well done. Yes. Extra points for you. Okay. We can give you a note to take to school or wherever so you can get extra credit. <laughs> Okay, that does take us to anybody else before we move on, like to be heard at this privilege of the floor. All right, we do have uh, for a matter of public interest on September 21st, we will be holding a budget budget workshop. It's a special town board meeting uh, on that Wednesday night. Uh, it is my intention that on that night we'll be taking at that is the night where we'll take action on the RSM property. Uh, it's not my intention to just if it's if we don't continue with it. It is not my intention to just let it go in sunset. Uh, there will be a vote taken on the property uh, on the 21st. And that, that's my plan. And that's the intention of that. Okay. All right, presentations. Um, so we have John Goodwin in the city. And Chief McNair. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us. Again, I have Chief Frank back there with the City Fire Department. Just give me one second here. So, when well, I usually speak to you during my own report, I don't really get the privilege to talk about the entire department, exactly what we do. We kind of keep it brief to kind of this year end statistics, kind of pertinent matters, and just to kind of keep it brief for you guys. So tonight I just kind of want to focus on exactly what it is that we do, what we provide the city and the town of Canandaigua. 
Um, do I say next slide or it'd be easy for you? Okay, all right. So, so again, the intent is to, to continue our partnership uh, with the town. Um, we've been in business for over 200, and 200 years, and we feel that our experience in providing fire and rescue services uh, to the city and the town um, are exemplary. Um, just pull my notes, be easier. One second. And feel free to stop me, correct me. If you have any questions, please let me know, okay? Um, so again, we want to provide you guys and prolong our, our fire service agreement uh, in the years to come. Go next slide. Um, so what is it we do? We provide all hazards fire service. Basically what that means is we work 24 seven, seven days a week, 365, with paid staff as well as volunteer staff uh, to protect everything that we we live in work in and tour um we offer professional and efficient fire suppression ems first response rescue services emergency preparedness fire prevention public education um and i'll show you the list goes on more chief how many volunteer firemen you got so those numbers are dwindling dramatically so right now we have six so i have one that's in, uh, interior qualified and five exterior um, those exterior firefighters are very, very important to us because they free up the, the, the mainly career staff that comes in off duty for the jobs as hooking a hydrant, providing traffic control, getting tools, setting up ladders, stuff like that. Um, what we protect, obviously we have four and a half square miles of the city of Canandaigua, uh, and roughly now we protect about 28 square miles total, um, as you can see on the map here. That was a point of works here. Um, next slide, please. Our structure. Um, I work under the public safety director, John Goodwin. Um, and with that, I have a part time office manager and a part time fire inspector. And below that, we have four platoons of three firefighters assigned to shifts. It's 24 7, seven days a week, 365. Um, we have three float firefighters. Uh, what that does is basically fill in any holes, vacation, um, planned leave, uh, kind of keeps that schedule uh, to at least three to four firefighters on duty. And then my volunteers fill in, obviously, as needed. Our staff is the career staff. Each and every one of us is an EMT or has been an EMT. Um, so we have at least 15 New York State certified EMTs and one paramedic on staff, 24-7, 24 uh, seven days a week. Typically, it's three firefighters on duty daily. Occasionally, about 25% of the time, we have four, uh, just depending on how the schedule is. They have to have the required hours. They're required to work 20, uh, 2,088 hours under the contract. Um, during the week, during the day, um, we could have upwards of six more off duty coming in available to come to major events. Um, I encourage that. They're allowed to come in in any major fire, any major car accident, any major alarm that, that we need assistance for. And the turnout for that is, is relatively quickly because a lot of them live close to the community, in the town or in the surrounding community here. Um, plus we have a daily part-time fire inspector who comes in and, and helps supplement some of the staffing. Again, any questions, feel free to clarify. Volunteer staff, again, those numbers are dwindling. We try to recruit. Some come in, some leave, some age out. It's just the nature of the beast. It's a natural trend, which I'll talk to you later. And that part-time staff. So what do we do? Obviously structural firefighting, right? Our fire department. Um, but basically we're trying to change the name back to fire rescue services it's because we do BLS first response. Basically what that is, we go to all major medical calls in, in our district. Uh, they're called priority calls. So the, the heart attacks, the strokes, the trouble breathing, stuff like that. Um, as I'll discuss in a little bit later, a few other slides. And as some of you are aware of the, the countywide fire and EMS study, there is an issue with emergency services in our county, in our state, across the country. Uh, the system is taxed. And again, I'll talk to it more here in a little bit. But so we provide that B BLS first response to help the ambulance. If they're turning around, at the hospital, dropping another patient off, 
we respond to those and alleviate the situation. Hazmat or hazardous materials. <clears throat> Just yesterday, we had a call at Wegmans for a refrigerant leak. It was a hazardous materials incident. We were able to mitigate that pretty quickly without closing a store or causing any of public safety concerns. Um, so we're all trained in multiple levels of hazmat, which I'll go into a little bit. We have an airport in our community, a very busy airport. So we're trained to the aircraft or rescue and firefighting or ARF. Um, we're all confined space rec rescue technicians, which that is basically we go into small confined spaces, sewer systems, tanks. Uh, many times workers have to get in those places, obviously for maintenance or repairs, and they become stuck, have medical emergency. We're trained to go into those, those spaces and there's not many of those teams across the state. Trench Rescue, Trees for Self, say if Mr. Fletcher's crew is out doing a water line and God forbid they have a slough in or a cave in, our members are trained to, to help with that. Obviously, it's, it's a very unique rescue situation, so we'd have to bring in more resources such as Rochester or um, the state. Collapse, uh, building collapse, where they'll shore it up. Ice water, cold water, that's one of our busier ones. Again, year round that lake has activity, you know, and a lot of times you have people walking on thin ice, they fall in, dogs go in, we're trained to get them out. Surface water, uh, last year, it was last year, or year before, last year, I had the uh, entire department, about uh, 15 or 14 members uh, get state certified in surface water. Basically what that is, is, um, the surface water is the lake or pools or, or ponds uh, to get people out safely. High and low angle rope rescue, animal rescue uh, speaks for itself. Um, fire prevention, education, and community risk reduction. That is one of our bigger ones. Uh, we provide all the school um, with fire prevention, um, daycares, community groups. Um, we enjoy getting out the community and really spreading the fire prevention message. Fire inspection. Plan and plant review, pretty much what I do. You guys provide me plans of all your construction coming in. I review it, make sure it's uh, acceptable for, for the fire department. Fire arson and explosion investigation. We have our own team, our own unit. We have three members that are level one, level two certified, as well as I am a nationally certified fire investigator um, and emergency management. Is that good? So again, what else do we do? You know, community engagement. Provide tours. This last weekend, we're at Ice Cream Social. Guys loved it. Got ice cream and hand out uh, fire prevention stickers and all that fun stuff. Um, again, support the school events, community events. We speak to organizations. Tomorrow, I speak to the Qantas. I'm having them at, uh, at our station for lunch, giving them a tour and just kind of an update on the fire service. Uh, Pre-plan our community risk and tactics, we'll get, we'll, which I'll get into in a little bit. Again, any public engagement. And answer your question, provide guidance. You think that's a no brainer, but since we are the only staff department in the area, other than Geneva and Fishers, many times I get calls from Yates County or uh, Prattsburg, Naples, because they have a question about a smoke detector or you know, fire extinguisher. Just try to provide them some guidance. We, we, we try to get them back to the home department, but when they call back and say, nobody answered and I want an answer now, we provide them some education, you know, but that's just the nature of the beast. Any questions on what we provide? So again, it's more of an all hazards approach to firefighting. Our training. Each member meets or exceeds New York State law, part 426. Um, they go to the New York State Fire Academy or an equivalent fire academy. It's a three to four month academy process. It's a very rigorous training program. Um, after that, once they graduate the fire academy, I put them through a 16 week in-house FTO or field training just to make sure that they're prepared for the rigors of Canandaigua Fire Department. Again, the lower staffing levels and the risk that's associated with, with our community. Um, so that's 16 weeks. All of our interior qualified volunteers, mean FPA, or the New York State Firefighter One, Firefighter Two, all of our career fire officers, like captains here in the back, they all went to FDNY for training, frontline supervisors training. It's a month long training 
program it's designed for frontline supervisors and get your fire officer training. Um, very important to know how to run a fire scene or incident scene. Okay. Not to my own horn, but I have over 24 years experience in the fire service, both career and volunteer. I have multiple degrees in fire science, fire dynamics, fire and safety engineering, and have a master's in emergency management and homeland security and safety, as well as fire uh, administration. Um, I meet the municipal law that just passed a few years ago, um, the Christ would do, to be a career fire chief. Um, and I'm an NFPA certified fire protection specialist, which is only about 4,000 in the country. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, I've been on the phone with other people today, so bear with me. So on an annual basis, <clears throat> Our career firefighters and volunteer firefighters meet a bare minimum of 100 hours. It's a requirement that the career firefighters must have with the state. Uh, we exceed that just with our daily trainings, um, our department-wide trainings, um, and all the, the conferences and training opportunities we get to go to. Um, and this is just a list of a few. I'm not going to read them all, but you can see there's a wide range of topics and training uh, agendas that we are required to provide the state. Any questions? Yeah. So again, just to go into a little bit more specialized operations, again, EMTs, paramedic, certified instructors. Uh, we have MFIs or missile fire instructors, um, as well as we have um, our uh, MTO, Ben Kramers, or uh, missile training officer is instructor one, instructor two. Um, he goes to a lot of places to teach uh, other academies uh, to help other departments. Um, it's one of the ways that uh, I could keep the cost down for the academy as I submit um, our instructors here to kind of keep that cost down. Um, rope rescue technicians, hazmat operations, technician specialist. Um, again, I'm a technician and specialist. We have many technicians on, on, the, on the department, confined space, collapse. Again, I'm not going to go too much into this, but as you can see, the same thing, New York State certified, certified, certified. You know, we pride ourselves in getting the actual certifications and doing this training. And again, one of my big ones is the fire life safety educator, which uh, Captain Sam Lachlan will heads up that team. Questions? So again, our, our training occurs routinely. Every shift, they're doing something. Um, they're, they're pulling tools out the trucks, they're setting it up, exercising them. With that, they're refreshing themselves. Firefighting skills are so perishable. It's, it, it goes so quick. I mean, even uh, I was a rope rescue technician in Kentucky, it takes me forever to get back into the swing of things. I can barely tie my shoes. That's why I have a zipper. So it's, I encourage them to routinely train, do online training. There's so many opportunities out there to train. Uh, so they do that every shift. Department wide, we get together uh, to do the, the bigger evolutions and drills, uh, such as auto execration and some of the more technical stuff. Um, obviously, they're not going to pull multiple hand lines off the truck and put themselves out of service unless we have more members there to quickly put it back up. Um, so annually, we're required to do all those trainings and we do that. Uh, we do multiple live fire trainings at the, the county um, and sometimes outside of the county, Monroe County. Um, and again, we are the only confined space rescue team in the area that's certified. Questions on training? Okay. Brief overview of our infrastructure. Um, our stations built 1990, um, over 32 years old, both these stations, um, and they're starting to age. Um, we put considerable money into station one over the, the, the few years that I've been here with the help for the city manager, getting a new HVAC bay floor, that which was needed. I'm sure many of you guys have visited station one over the years and seen the tile pop up, and we finally got a bay floor in there that's it's that's usable and safe. Um, and we're starting to do more and more painting and, and some other capital improvement projects there. Um, station two, we've been painting, we've been trying to do some upkeep, um, but again, that station's starting to age. And I'm looking for you guys' direction on what we're gonna do with station two. And we've had some talks about it. It's gonna need a roof, bay doors eventually. Um, and obviously the generators, the, the big one, I believe that the, the banners have been talked about that. Um, Next slide. Our fleet, 
Uh, engine 211, it's one of the busiest engines, if not the busiest engine in the county. Um, it's a 2017, uh, it's one of our new ones in the fleet. Um, it, it meets the requirements that um, the study group had put out back in 2018 on uh, meeting NFPA's uh, 1500 GPM um, pump and pump capacity and discharges. Um, that's front line out of station one. Uh, engine 212 is one of our reserves. That is due to be replaced uh, soon. We're working on the capital plan as we speak. Um, we're um, design, engineering that right now with some vendors. Um, that is in reserve, uh, most often at station two. Uh, currently right now is at station one. Our ladders, uh, tower 281. We, we uh, signed a contract with E1 um, uh, back in 2020 or 2020. Yes, I get my years wrong here. Um, we are supposed to take delivery of it, but with supply chains and everything else going on, and delays, it keeps being pushed out. Uh, we won't see that truck now until March of 2023, which is unfortunate uh, because this current truck is is eating up uh, tires and causing it's, it's a maintenance nightmare. So it's just uh, dollar billing us to, to death, really. But it is the most important truck in the fleet. Um, we have a we have identified numerous buildings that uh, need to reach that 100 foot ladder. Um, obviously, with the new hotels. Um, many of the businesses and apartments on Main Street, uh, as well as uh, the surrounding community, uh, need is, needs that ladder. Chief, how many stories would that be? Uh, so uh, that'll reach about nine stories, depending on how the building is built. So one of our the, the most tallest building is is um, 80 pair Street, six stories, about 75, 80 feet tall. But again, you got to worry about reach and the way the truck is parked. Um, so. Um, we expect the new one to be a 100 foot platform as well to, to meet their requirement. <clears throat> uh, ladder 282, um, that's a 2013. That um, is in the capital plan to be replaced in 2028 or to begin engineering for a new ladder truck um, in 2028. Um, we rotate these back and forth for front line, depending on maintenance and, and whatnot, but we'd like to keep an engine and a ladder front line at all times. Some of our support vehicles, Squad 261, it's a light rescue truck. Uh, that has a lot of our rope equipment, non specialized equipment, um, hazmat equipment, um, and some other uh, uh, technical supplies. Um, that is my old vehicle. I recently uh, repurposed that uh, to be the fire prevention vehicle. Um, the fire inspector, as well as our fire prevention folks, uh, will take that out. Uh, they were taken out of the diesel truck, but you guys know gas prices right now. so. Uh, this truck is pretty efficient in fuel, um, so the day-to-day -day the inspector can get out and uh, be seen with that. Um, last year, I repurposed uh, a DPW uh, street supervisor's truck with a plow on it. Uh, we put that in our special operations division to pull trailers, pick up hose, pick up supplies, a people carrier, uh, plus it has a plow. Um, you guys know in the town, there's many houses that sit well off the road. Winter time comes, it's hard to get an ambulance in without getting stuck. Uh, we'll run that um, in front of that to at least maybe clear out some areas, clear out some snow. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a very good truck uh, in addition to the department thus far. Uh, as Doug mentioned before, he heard my truck coming down the road. Um, that is, is my new uh, fire chief vehicle or incident command truck. Um, it's a 2021 hybrid. Um, again, I, I, we purchased that. Um, back in 2020 and just took delivery in May on that just because of the supply chain issues. And then we also have a technical rescue trailer that has our confined space equipment, some other technical equipment in there. Questions on the fleet. I'm not gonna harp on NFPA 1901. We do follow that uh, replacement schedule. Um, it is part of the national consensus standards um, on replacement of frontline vehicles. And we try to stick to the, any frontline apparatus that's older 15, we move it to, to, to reserve if it is capable to do so. <clears throat> so community expectations. So what do we look at as a fire department? So, and what does the community expect out of us? There's multiple 
ways of looking at this. And this was actually a, a picture from uh, what was in the 2018 study that the CPSM did for, for us, the city and the town. Um, it looks at staffing levels, how you deploy your apparatus, our station locations, travel times, EMS demand, uh, workload, et cetera. Um, on a routine basis, I do this every single, at least monthly to kind of look at our statistics. How are we deploying our resources? Are we doing a good job at that? Um, do our, does our fleet, does our training match what the need is out there? Uh, so this is a continuous process in my office. Um, next slide. So community risk, as you heard, as we talked the last couple of times, I met with you guys as well as the, um, the annual uh, meeting, um, our call volume is going up. It's increasing uh, dramatically. Um, there is a huge demand on the system. Um, again, I mentioned the, the, the county-wide study that's going on right now. Um, I was hoping to have some information uh, before this meeting, uh, but that study has been delayed. Um, it's, it, we're not sure when we'll get the actual report back, um, but um, hopefully that, that, that study will provide us with a good, accurate depiction of what's going on in the county, uh, not just our area, but, you know, uh, countywide. Um, and what you folks can help us, you know, do to fix it. Um, new construction. Um, Uptown, Center Point, all the stuff that you guys have slated for that area. It's very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but with that comes with risk. Lightweight type five construction, wood construction. Um, they do me code. And I, during plan review process, I, I hope to ensure that as well as you now the code enforcement officers here do a very good job at catching all that. Um, but those buildings still burn. Those buildings still have problems. Um, and now you started getting into different building materials, such as the new green technology, where everything's so energy efficient, um, like the windows and doors, there's no air exchanges in there. Um, so when, and if there is a fire, by the time it's reported to us, it's meaning a sweet spot of potential danger for us. And I'll go into a couple slides forward here. Uh, new retail commercial properties, again, very exciting, but those are service users. Um, increasing lake and recreational, recreational activity. Um, I wish I had numbers on that, but just me being new to community in the last five years, I've noticed, I mean, you know, COVID aside, there's been a lot more activity on the lakefront um, and it's around. It's, it's great that people are outdoors and using our parks and, and, and stuff, but it's also um, increased risk to, to folks of injury and, and, and other calamities um, that we have to take into account for. Airport traffic, I live near the airport. Um, I see it every day, jets. I mean, more and more jet traffic, which is great. It's, it's wonderful that they're coming in. They're, they're you know, going to the, the large uh, manufacturing plants or coming in for tourism. Um, so yeah, we, we, we had a plane crash. You know, we've had plane crashes before. Thank God, nothing major like a jet, um, but we need to be pre prepared for that. Uh, increasing daily population. I'm looking for, um, forward to the, I think the traffic studies coming back. Has that come back yet? Did you guys do that? No. So um, that'll be interesting to see the, the daily numbers of uh, traffic. Um, I just know from our runs that motor vehicle accidents seem to be on the rise, um, and especially in the north end of our district. Um, Emerson 28 is one of our most trouble spots, um, as well as 332. Um, other risk is tech risk. Everything's going to lift the IM, IM batteries, hybrid vehicles, Teslas, um, hoverboards, e-bikes. Now you guys could, you know, you probably in social media, you probably see the videos out there. It's violent. It's very, it's, you know, it's, it's dangerous. Um, so dangerous that FDNY just did a symposium um, a few weeks ago, or I believe it was last week, um, on how they're going to try and limit um, some of these um, uh, e-bikes and hoverboards in tenement buildings, apartment buildings, just because they're so dangerous and it cause a large loss of life. <clears throat> uh, we have an aging population, our demographic. Um, our, our demographic keeps getting older. Um, people are living longer, which is wonderful, um, but they are service users. Um, just a quick note that 
about half of all fire deaths and injuries are either children or older adults. And that's what we focus our fire prevention on yearly as we go out to senior homes, uh, communities, and obviously the schools. It increase for demand for EMS and rescue services, aging infrastructure. Um, and as we know, we're, we're vulnerable to biological pandemics. You know, it's just, it's just ever changing. And I hope that uh, this one's, you know, starting to leave us, but uh, we don't know what's around the corner, so we get to prepare for that. Next slide. Um, so again, I typically do a community risk and vulnerability assess assessment. Um, when I look at plans, when I look at neighborhoods, when I look at businesses, we do pre-plans. Um, I do it to the NFPA fire protection handbook, high, medium, low hazard occupancies. Um, obviously, our, the lower hazard are, are one and two family dwellings. Um, and then our higher hazard uh, occupancies are the hospitals, schools, nursing homes, um, industrial areas, stuff like that. Next slide. Um, that assessment helps me determine what staffing levels we need. Um, so single family dwelling, according to the NFPA, um, need a minimum of 12 members. Um, typically, we, we turn out that on a, our normal structure fire response. Uh, immediately, we're getting three to four firefighters plus me. Um, call back for manpower, as well as assistance from surrounding volunteer agencies or uh, the VA fire department. As you can see, you know, we started getting into larger apartments, uh, three-story apartments. You need 27 firefighters immediately on scene within nine minutes. Any questions on, on this matrix or okay. <clears throat> this is a uh, graph showing over the last uh, 10 years or so the increase in call volume. This is total incident calls for the city and town uh, for our district and this town only. As you can see, last year was quite the jump in numbers uh, for calls for service. Um, I believe right now we're over 350 right now for the year for town. Right. Why is it important? Time. I mean, it, Everything that we do is timed. The EMS chain of survival, you know, somebody's having a, a heart attack. You obviously want to get there quickly, right? So we turn out the door pretty much instantaneously. The bell goes off, the horn rings, or the bell rings, and firefighters are getting dressed, ready to go. They're out the door within 30 seconds, typically. Um, why is that important? Again, we talked about the EMS chain of survival. Fire is fast, it doubles in size every 30 seconds. Um, the products in, in our homes, I mean, just think about your living room or your bedroom, what your couch is made of now, what, uh, you know, your cars are made of, uh, what's, um, you know, what's in your, your kitchens. Um, everything is synthetic. It burns very, very fast, very, very hot. Um, and that what, that's what this time temperature curve is. Uh, typically, from detection, about, about a minute, somebody detects that there's a fire in their home. Um, they report the fire to 911. 911 processes that. Um, they dispatch us. And by the time that we respond to the fire, we can pretty much get that art anywhere in just about three or four minutes. Um, there's only a couple space uh, areas that it may take five or six, um, but nine times out of 10, we're on scene within four minutes. Um, usually by that time, that fire has grown to a phase called um, full room involvement or flashover, which is dangerous for us. Um, so we try to get there quicker to beat that time, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I could do a full on class of fire dynamics, but I don't want to you know, bore you with fire chemistry and fire dynamics. Um, so again, time is very important. Next slide. Uh, the typical NFPA response matrix, again, I talked about it. Uh, it's about a minute for the, the person, the victim to discover the fire, a minute for the 911 center to process it or um, to, to get the call, a minute to process. That turnout time is a national average for 1.5 minutes. Again, we exceed that. We're, we're out the door within 30 seconds. Again, total lapse to, to initial intervention, getting you know, hoses off the trucks, you know, getting water in the fire is about eight minutes. 
that's the national average. We exceed all those times. Yeah, next slide. And yeah, these are our average times. Again, three and a half minutes to get on scene. That's that's good for both districts. I mean, it's very good. And the percentage of response under nine minutes, 96% of the time we are there within nine minutes, which just note that a lot of our calls don't dictate going lights and siren. You know, if we get a report of a cable line down, that's not hazardous. Uh, we'll go, you know, uh, non-emergency or um, a carbon monoxide engine, uh, incident that's not required. Uh, it's, it's a came in as a battery issue. Call for service. We'll go non-emergency. Uh, next slide. Any questions on on those slides before? Again, I'm not going to harp on the national trend. Um, as I talked about, my volunteers. Uh, we've had hundreds of volunteers throughout our organization over the years. Again, now we're down to six. And that seems to be a national trend. You know, I mean, you can go to any department around us, anywhere in the state, and they're going to say their numbers aren't there anymore, right? Um, typically, you know, the averages I found from the National Volunteer Fire Service Council, um, an article I read, just said they average about three to six hours per week. You know, um, it's not much. I mean, it's, it's great. They're helping the community. But when a time comes, we need people out the door pretty quickly. Um, and some of the statistics I see that the injury rates are up, again, declining membership. Next slide, please. I have more on that one. So moving forward, what are we doing in the city here? Um, again, I talked about our fleet. We're currently engineering two engines and a heavy rescue truck. Um, we're looking at getting those into replacement schedule. Right now, you're looking at two-year build time and a fire engine. Um, as you I mentioned before, our tower truck was supposed to be here by now and it's got pushed out again. Um, so minimum about 600 days. They say it in days to make you feel better, but it's two years. You know, so um, we're trying to get our name in the hat, get that going. Again, talked about doing capital improvement projects, you know, upgrading our stations, you know, investing in them, making them last another 30 years. Um, generators, roof, bay doors, all the stuff that wears out over time. Um, I purchased SCBA uh, brand new air packs or SCBAs. Um, this year, we're supposed to take delivery with them um, uh, coming up next month, radios, new tech equipment. Um, I'll try and speed this up for you guys, sorry. Um, so again, I'm, we're researching new techniques, technology, equipment to keep up with the times. You know, gear changes. Um, again, I, I mentioned that the fires are getting hotter and faster, so we have to have the proper turnout gear, proper equipment to, to, to combat that. Um, and I'm always looking at capital improvement and continuous improvement. Yeah, next slide. Um, we're going to continue with building our, our community partnerships. Uh, we've been at Pactive. We've been doing their safety days the last couple of years, which been great. Um, tours. Uh, understand their processes, understanding that, so we teach them how we respond and what's the appropriate response if a if fire or emergency ever happens. Uh, Acoustis, I was out there a few weeks ago um, and I evaluated the perm uh, permit required confined space program, make sure that both parties understood what processes they had out there and where their workers are. You know, so in case, you know, again, God forbid something happens, we can get to those places very, very quickly and understand the risk that's for us as well as their employees. Um, trolley station, I mentioned trolley station because one, we're there a lot, it's a big service user, um, but every year, the last year was the in, uh, first year is, uh, and we're, we're having an event coming up in October. Uh, it's basically um, a partnership with law enforcement, EMS and fire um, with their residents. We're having, it's called bean bags and barbecue. Uh, so it's a coronal tournament with the residents uh, as well as they're providing lunch and it's just a it's a day, day event out there and they enjoyed it last year and we're going to do that we're going to continue to provide fire prevention education um i am actively have been trying to reduce our iso ppc rating which is a 44x which is still uh, a very good rating for our area um but our last true evaluation was in 2005 the water system um and jim probably understands that it's way before BF, again, before Frank, um, and they did another evaluation in 16, but they didn't include the water uh, improvements that we've done, you've guys done, as well as the city's done in the years. 
Um, so this, by my estimates, um, I believe that we could dramatically lower our PPC rating from a four, four X to at least a two, just with the, the programs that we have in place, the whole entire man, one system, water system, our training, um, will will get us there. I just got to get them here. I've been trying to get them here for the last year. Just haven't done it yet. And again, researching alternatives, uh, looking for grants. We, we, we were awarded grants, but they're not the big ones that we need. You know, the, every little thing helps, um, but some of the smaller ones that I'm getting, uh, we, we are awarded the Mary Clark Thompson grant, which is great, or Mary, uh, that's great, excuse me. And that's gonna go for uh, fire prevention uh, um, uh, materials. Next slide. Again, we're looking to increase daily staffing levels to match our demand risk, uh, and meet the study that was done in 2018 which uh, says four firefighters on duty 24 seven, seven days a week. Um, we're gonna provide a more regional approach to fire rescue service community. We're already going those places. Um, we're trying to get those communities on board um, and using us as a resource. Um, and lastly, um, we're trying to expand our community risk reduction program, not just doing fire inspection, not just doing fire prevention, um, but trying to get the state involved uh, with some incentives for sprinkler systems and other uh, incentives to kind of uh, really reduce the risk for fire and other hazards uh, out there. Um, but um, that's the work in progress and I gotta get that from the state. So um, questions on that, sorry I was long-winded, but I just feel like I never really get a chance to really tell you exactly what we do um, and kind of paint that picture. I hope I did. Questions? Uh, there is conclusion from, from my part, and then I'll turn it over to, to city manager, uh, John Goodwin, for his. We might have some at the end, so don't get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going, Doug, there. Uh, so um, Frank gave a great uh, presentation of, of what we do for uh, what they do every day to protect both the town and the city. Um, and we've had a shared services agreement for many years, and we'd like to continue that shared service agreement. Um, and, we've, uh, and the town manager and I have been talk talking about that. Um, you know, and as you, you are already aware, we did not come to uh, agreeable terms at this point. Um, but what was requested of us is to expand to our career staffing of 218, uh, to expand our coverage area to, uh, for automatic aid uh, down County Road 16 all the way to Butler. Um, and there was an inquiry about potentially covering the entire town. Uh, we can do the first two um, and more. Um, go to the next slide, Doug. Um, so we pro-offered an agreement that's a fair distribution of costs uh, for the fire and all hazard emergency uh, response that we provide uh, for all taxpayers, city and town. Um, it does recognize the large increase in call volume as, as the, the chief showed. Uh, the town call volume in the last 10 years increased 234% um, and is running consistent that, this, this year at that same level. Uh, next slide, please. So the, uh, the formula that we came up with, because um, we tried to have it based on facts um, and not just uh, conjecture, um, was looking at that total call volume, looking at the total assessed value and just the current coverage area, weighing both of them at 50%. Uh, to determine that the town's uh, overall cost share would be 28%. Um, so the other thing is, is, is I'm not interested, the city's not interested in getting a single penny more than what, you know, 28% uh, of actual costs. Uh, so what we would look at is the, you know, uh, the, our audited, uh, independently audited, uh, you know, uh, accounting that counts for every single penny um, and make sure that you don't pay a penny more than the 28% of what our actual cost is. Um, and we also, we offered a, a, a cap uh, to protect you in, in case our costs uh, balloon. Uh, but uh, as we all know, we all try to uh, manage every penny. All right, next slide, please. Um, so shared services, they only work when both parties uh, get a meaningful benefit. Uh, the city gets to provide a high quality, all hazards fire services uh, to both the city and the town. Um, and the town gets the advantage of those services that would cost significantly more to do on its own. Uh, it makes sense for both the city and the town to share. It's in the best interest of both of us. 
Um, and you know, I understand that the the increase that I request uh, is a significant increase. Um, I uh, totally understand that. Uh, but you know, if the town's not paying its fair share, that means that the city taxpayers are, are overburdened on on their on their on their side. Uh, so we're trying to find a share a fair share compromise, and I hope uh, that we can uh, come to terms on that. And I thank you for your consideration. Now, now we can do the questions. See, I was a lot shorter than the chief. <laughs> yep, this was all good. Here's all the money. <laughs> yeah. Well, un unfortunately, the services we provide cost money. Um, you know, no one likes that, especially at budget time of year. But that's that's the the brass tax of it all. What would the? Uh, I haven't decided myself. I speak only for myself, but. What would the city fire department look like if the town said we don't need your help? Would you still have the same staffing? Would you have the same equipment, um, resources? I mean, what? Well, I, I, fortunately, I, I don't want to look at that reality because it makes sense for both of us to look to work together. Um, but and that's an assessment we'd have to make um, if that were to happen. Um, but I don't think that makes sense for for either party to to cut ties. What do you think? Um, John knows my feeling on it. Uh, I've asked for considerable more firefighters on duty, um, but I'm reasonable. I understand. Uh, I'm a taxpayer um, here in the town. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, we need 18 firefighters immediately. That was something that the the study said, you know. And um, I'm I'll have the same spiel with city council, you know. And ultimately, it's up to you and council to make those decisions, you know. Um, we need manpower. You know, I was spoiled as a career firefighter in Kentucky. I had four firefighters on my engine company. One truck was able to mitigate 99% of the incidents without having to dump full stations. You know, some of you know, these smaller, I don't want to say insignificant calls, but, you know, some like a carbon monoxide in, you know, incident or a gas call where you wouldn't need to dump full stations. Um, just having the appropriate manpower. Somebody gets sick or injured. You don't have to call overtime. You can have a minimum staff or, you know, drop down a firefighter. So I'm always going to advocate for more firefighters. He's going to reel me in. That's his job. Um, so, so yeah, that's, I'm, I'm going to try and follow the national consensus standards and keep our firefighters safe. If we were to increase significantly, as what been requested, would we be able to direct those dollars to increasing staffing? Or would the money just become fungible? And so, so the proposal that uh, that I proffered is that for the at least the nine hundred fifty thousand, we would go to eighteen firefighters. Uh, we would have a capital allocation, including improvements to Station Two. Uh, we are also pursuing uh, a legitimate fire rescue boat. Um, so we uh, would we would one hundred percent have those eighteen firefighters uh, as soon as humanly possible. Um, and we would make those capital improvements uh, to both the city and the town facilities. In the past summer, this past summer, I know there's been a number of times when um, there have been emergencies outside the city and the town coverage area. You guys were first in the city, Farmington and some other areas. Has the city ever approached any of these people and said, you know, you're using our resources? How about uh, kicking them a few bucks? Yeah, so that is in our in our plans to do that. Um, the, as uh, the chief had mentioned, the county is doing an overall study of both the 911 uh, system and uh, fire and EMS. Uh, so we thought it best to have that data and uh, as backup to approach uh, towns like Farmington and Hopewell um, and some other surrounding uh, towns. Um, with that said, uh, we're not responding to 505 calls anywhere else other than the town of Canandaigua, and we're not getting there within three minutes in those other communities, which, as the chief, you know, outlined, is is critical uh, for both EMS and fire events. Um, so we uh, provide first first alarm response to both the town and the city, and we're there within this, those three minutes, which makes a huge difference. Um, but you know, so in in those events like in, in Farmington, where like the I think the Dollar General was the, um, no, or, yeah, um, things like that, um, we're getting called way down the line, and you're not there in those three minutes, and that again makes a huge difference in the end result. What is the total budget? Where 
So if you include the the the, the capital allocation plus op operating, it's a little over three million dollars. Three. Correct. And that that with that includes an estimate for those three firefighters to get to eighteen in total staffing. A little over three million. And our calls were five hundred five out of twenty one forty or twenty one eighty. Uh, well, we had about 2,200 calls. Um, That's about a quarter of the calls. Correct. It was roughly 23% of, of call volume. So if you went strictly on those numbers, the quarter of the 3 million would be 750,000. Just a, just a I, 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 can, I can show you the exact numbers of, of how I came up with the calculations. And um, I think I've already shared those. I can share those uh, some more with you as well. Uh, but the, the, the 950 is, is the, the fair number. I just want to just kind of you know call on the side. You got to also look at risk. Let's so kind of really kind of hammer on risk. What is it that we protect? We protect everything that happens day to day in the town. All your commercial businesses, your factories. Uh, protective is with the second largest employer in the county. I think the hospital system is number one. Um, Acoustics. Um, so um, all your retail. Um, so anything detrimental happens to those areas. People out of work. You're losing your tax money, um, so people, people can't go to you know go work, can eat. Um, so look at the overall encompassing risk of what what it is that my firefighters do on a daily basis, and they do a very very good job of, of it. Twenty four seven, three sixty. Great debate there. So, well, thank you. I just want to. I always forget to mention that you know in the beginning how much I appreciate what they do on a daily basis oh. or what little they have. Um, so um, I'm very proud to be their chief. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to moving forward, you know, and, and, and yeah, we'll uh, see what we can do. So um, chief or John, either one you can answer, you're probably gonna have different answers on this. So I'll, you can come together and figure it out. Um, what's your ideal number? I mean, we've got high rise occupancies going on the lakefront in the city. The chart says minimum of 40 and we're at 18. So what is your, what's your ideal number? Well, we're not at 18 yet, uh, but the, the goal right now is, is to achieve 18. Right, well, we're, should be at 16 and we're at 15, right? Uh, well, we are at 15 firefighters plus, plus the chief gets us to 16. Um, and the only reason we didn't get there sooner is COVID got in the way and, uh, and, uh, and we can rehash all that details, but it, it doesn't matter, we're at that number now. Um, the goal is to get to 18. Uh, once we get to 18, we'll have four on duty. Um, and then we all, we also plan to talk to other you know, community partners uh, to expand further. Um, you know, so, but that'll depend on what ultimately gets built, uh, where. Point, like the, um, I would assume that the downtown, when the other down, when we have a lab two, we have, should eventually someday have two pretty significant hotels downtown. And when the second one is finished, what is your plan for that? And have you addressed how you're gonna fund those extra firefighters to get to that number? Because we all agree that you need more. What's the plan to get to that end? So again, the, the good thing about shared services is we can all achieve the goals for the overall community without overburdening any one municipality. Uh, so the plan is to continue to work together with our community partners, uh, which includes the town. So do you have anything specific? like other municipalities, have you thought where you're gonna to try to go with that? Like engaging the others and asking them for a percentage? Have you spec that out? We're waiting on the, the county study to have that backup data so that you know we're not coming to them without a third independent party uh, data to back it up. So we, we haven't uh, developed that full course of action, but that is in our, our plans. And so that's still kind of out there it, it, so it is, it is still there. out there, but you know, today as it stands, we only first respond to two communities. That's the town and the city. Right. Do you have any other funding sources other than the two municipalities? Uh, not at this time, but we plan to per pursue those as uh, we were just discussing um, with other community partners, uh, which would include you know some of the other surrounding towns um, and potentially maybe the federal government. The county provides us with some some money for protecting their their assets, um, but it's, it's not significantly enough to to just you know add staff. Do you have any um, more specific numbers? I'm looking at your increasing calls for service slide. Um, do you have any more specific numbers on the percentage increase from like 
2020 to 2021, I see a pretty significant jump there, obviously. Um, I mean, like the, the breakdown of those calls? Yeah, I'm just wondering, what, I mean, what the percentage increases. I, I can provide that so. to you. I have just a quick report. Yeah. Um, it's just pages that I don't want to tell you guys. It's like <laughs> graphs and charts, and I leave that for my annual report. Um, but I can certainly, if you want a breakdown per year of uh, different call types um, under the nine subcategories of NIFRS, I can certainly provide that to you. I mean, for me, that's probably one of the more important figures to so assess. So figure out what is it like, what, you go on more fires, EMS calls, car accidents. All the calls. above, but I mean, I mean okay. for, for me, if I'm trying to determine why you need more people and more money, it's gonna always come down to, <laughs> right. you're getting a lot more volume calls coming in and obviously there's a pattern here as well. Yeah, so if you look at the, the overall total calls in the last 10 years, they've grown about 80% in total. Um, if you look at just the city's calls, it's 60%. And as I said, if you look at just the town calls, it's 234%. Uh, so there is a driver there. I'd like to see a smaller window than 10 year. Um, we can do that. So that when we're talking about tax increase to our constituents, we can. Do you answer. want to see a three year, or five year, or? A, a one year and a, a three year. Three year. Okay. I think you guys need to go back first. What happened in 2017? Yeah, what happened in 2017? <laughs> I was only here for a very short time. That's what did you do, Frank? Uh, but, uh, I think we need to go back to the You know, there's ebbs and flows of, you know, anywhere. Um, but yeah, but yeah. Yeah, the, the chief is approaching his fifth year anniversary uh, yes, working for, those, for us here. It's 2184. Step 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 but it's keep in mind we asked the city to cover a larger portion. Well, that's why uh, so that could have been when that was. I'm sorry, you had a question. It's 2184, what I think that is total from city, last year. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is that the department's total calls, or is that only city and federal calls? That's the fire department district. Only including Farmington, the calls. Yeah, so if we get mutually aided to Farmington, that's included in those numbers, correct? The typical our, our our mutual aid given is a little bit higher this year. I think last year was about forty calls for service. I have to look at the annual report. I think you guys might even have been on file. And does that include the specialty stuff? I saw, and I think it probably does. But you're the only. Uh, you know, closed environment rescue sort of confined space rescue. Yes. Yeah. So every short spill is stuck. You guys go down there. If they call us, correct. Right. Uh, yeah. Do you send a bill? For, I, I'm assuming the answer is. So right now, there's there's only a very few things that we can bill for legally. Um, one is car accidents, um, and that's just basically for um, hazmat. So if there's okay. if we use oil dry uh, to, to to soak up. We can technically charge people. Um, we don't unless it's a very significant spill. Um, and it just goes after the insurance. And I, I've never done it since I was here. We, we do have that happen to do. But so. the rest is just courtesy. the rest is just basically courtesy. this is our courtesy and this is what we do. And again, I, I don't like to. He, he might kick me for it, but I don't want to charge anybody <laughs> anything. But there, there is the, the county mutual aid program, and and we we respond accordingly through through that that shared service agreement. Is the uh, split cost at 28 percent that you referenced based on assessed value? Has it always been based on assessed value? No, so we, we've had various different formulas over the years, um, and, and, and so we tried to, I tried to come up with one that was fair to both sides that had some, a reasonable basis. Uh, based on the property they protect plus the call volume, because it's not just property they're protecting, it's you know uh, all EMS calls and car wrecks and things like that. So try to account for, for both um, the types of things that uh, they provide service for. Any other questions from the board? It's not where we'll go for it. And yeah. Uh, if the if the chair would indulge me, uh, is there anything in the town that that requires a hundred and four foot ladder? Yes, um, active RMC, and it's just because it's not a elevated structure. 
It's a very large open structure. If you've ever been into the regional mixing center, active, it's full of foam. Um, um, luckily, that's protected by two fire pumps. I was actually there a few months ago when they commissioned it, but those fail. Uh, if you look at uh, Plainville, Illinois, or Indiana, at the Walmart uh, distribution center, there was a mishap with the sprinkler system. They burned down the entire um, distribution warehouse, put a wrinkle in the entire Walmart's distribution system nationwide. So that elevated master stream would be used to kind of combat that and try to keep it small. We get there quickly. Uh, we also use an elevated tower truck as um, a high angle rope rescue tie-off point. Um, any of the three stories protected or projected uh, apartment buildings um, that you can see in Parkside Drive, we would use that for. Um, well, hammocks aren't our district, it's the Cheshire's district, um, but we could reasonably go there. That, that, I believe that's one of their larger um, structures, um, but Parkside Apartments, Liberty Apartments, uh, to get to the roof quickly and safely, that truck is, is imperative. Um, when we can work off the bucket, um, that is that's the most safe way to do that. So other than throwing a ground ladder and then putting up another ladder and use a roof ladder. Um, so, so yes. It sounds like everything gets more dangerous over 75 feet from what I was reading for everybody involved. Yes. It's probably something we should keep in mind with planning. Yeah, and what we did propose is we would expand our coverage area. We would co uh, coverage all the high risk areas that, that the town has. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank Appreciate you for the time. And the report. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, is there questions you guys have? Uh, one, please. Thank you. We'll see all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not letting you leave. <laughs> she needs her perfect attendance. Card. I know. Okay. Uh, so we do not have any continued public public hearings, but we do have a new public hearing. Uh, public hearing on a proposed law to amend <clears throat> Town Code Chapter 174, the subdivision of land, Chapter 220 zoning, and Chapter zoning and Chapter 1, Section 17 definitions. Uh, this pertains to tonight's resolution 2022-233. At this time, I declare the public hearing open. And is there anyone who would like to be heard? Okay. Anybody online who would like to be heard? Okay. Linda, I think you have the floor. Hi there. Um, I just was wondering if somebody could summarize what what this changes for people in the town. Um, I I read it, but once again, it it kind of seems confusing. Uh, the main issue that that this deals with is the ability to subdivide off the of private drives, and the change that we made was allowing a little more flexibility in the small situations where, for example, if you already live off of a private drive and you have enough land where you don't need a variance, but you could subdivide that, you are allowed one subdivision off of that. So that's the difference between this and what was presented before and tabled at the last meeting. So uh, like one per year, one per property, one per what? One per property. So if it were, if there were 10 homes, you could have up to 10 eventually. If you, owned, if you owned 10 homes and they were all within the variance, if you did not need a variance, if it was all within the zoning allowed in that area and you owned 10 homes off of a private drive, you potentially could, but I don't think we have any situations like that in the town. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, anyone else like to be heard? Is there any objection to closing the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do have a question. Okay, you snuck that in, Mr. Casey. Go ahead. Um, so this is a modification to the ordinance that was recommended by the ordinance committee. Correct. And who went about changing this? Correct. Explain again how this differs from what the ordinance committee sent to the town. Let me, let me pull up my. Do you have the, you pull up the, the, uh, the attachment? It's going to be easier. Which attachment number is it? Uh, and the other thing that was section J. Yeah, yeah. You might beat us all to it. Oh. The planning board shall be authorized to grant single lot subdivision approval of any parcel along a private right of way and classify such action as a minor subdivision even if the private right of way has four or more parcels, provided the parent parcel meets the zoning requirements of the zoning district and the planning board finds it in so creating the single lot subdivision, no adverse impact shall occur pertaining to public health or safety of the adjoining parcels along the private right of way. So that's what I'm hearing is that the no longer is limiting Subdivision on private drive to three over three units. Well, this allows it to be a subdivision of as many units are, as are allowed per the zoning for that particular area. If you have a parcel, I'm going to try to. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking about the. I'm, I'm picturing it in my brain as I as I as I go and explain it. If you have a parcel, and you're off a private drive, okay, so you couldn't come in with a private drive. Anything more than that than that number is a major subdivision. So that number doesn't change. The only time that number would change is say you live on a private drive, and there are seven houses going up your private drive, but you own five acres, six acres. And you can subdivide that within the zoning. You can add one off of yours. So basically, what it would prevent, if you have that, and we're planning on doing something with it down the road, this does not prevent you. This does not hamstring you from doing something to that. So what I think I just heard you say was that if the existing subdivision is greater than three, you are allowed to add to it many units as the zoning of that property would allow. No. It's, it's just a one. single so lot, it's a single, single lot, lot subdivision. subdivision. It, so then if you were to create a new private drive, you're only allowed three. Yes. Anything greater than that becomes it's a major subdivision. subdivision. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. Yes. Thank you for asking. Did you want to say that? No, that was exactly the other thing. It's only one. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else to sneak in at the left under the gun? <laughs> you bet. All right. So, without uh, objection from the board, I declare this public hearing closed. Now it's time for the report of uh, town officials and department heads. Jim Highway. Um, we're getting close to wrap up our highway over here. Um, Jim, can I, could you speak up a little bit for a second? The town of Canada was chosen for the EPA to be involved with program for PFOAs and PFAOS, something. Uh, I'm still learning about it. So, we'll be reporting 
water samples taken, or use this model to determine future regulations of drinking water. Uh, at this time, there's no cost of time, so that may change. So you have to take samples of different points in throughout the year? Yeah, we're working on that now. It's down to certain labs for testing. And how long is this? Good question. <laughs> Okay, by your answer, I <laughs> okay. It sounds like it's a well thought out process. <laughs> so it's as long as it is. It's as long as the federal government says you keep doing this. Okay. All right, thank you. Anything else? No. Okay. So, so, so. Jean. Um, yes. Um, the tentative budget has been distributed to the town board members. Um, the tentative um, budget can be viewed on the town's website from the town manager's page. There's also a hard copy in my office that's available for public viewing. The town board will be holding two meetings to review the, the budget. The first one is Wednesday, September 21st. The second one, if necessary, is Monday, October 3rd. Both are at 6 o'clock. Both are here at the town hall. So I just want to announce the distribution of the 2023 tentative budget to the top of the course. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so the 21st will be down in the Oriana room um, because Newport is in here, but on the third, if we need it, we'll be back. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Can, can I mention it? Congrats. I saw you were a choice as a collecting officer mentor in New York State. Yes. Very exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Shauna, do you have anything to share at this time? In addition to my report. Okay. I think she said nothing. Yeah, you kind of got, yeah, you didn't get the, uh, a little slow on the release of the microphone there. All right, uh, town manager Doug, do you have anything in addition to yours? Okay. Uh, likewise, I do not have anything in addition. Um, I can add, and I know this has been discussed, that the county RFP for the housing has been accepted and been chosen and that was voted on. Uh, hopefully next year, it'll take a while for the project to go on, nothing moves quickly. Uh, so the goal is, early mid next year to have some more information on that when the data will be collected and the data will be looked at uh, for that. Uh, I don't have anything for finance. Karen, do you have anything to bring up for finance? I do not. Okay, other than the budget information. So we'll see everyone in here on the 21st. We'll all squeeze in. Uh, here. Three <laughs> yep, and we'll all squeeze in there. Uh, Terry, anything for public planning, public works? Uh, we didn't have a meeting this month. I couldn't get enough of the, the group together. There is a resolution in the uh, package tonight, though, for uh, uh, MRB to uh, do a preliminary engineering report for County uh, Bill 28 sewer uh, effort. So, okay, thank you. Uh, John, anything from ordinance? No. On top of development, uh, ECB, Adeline. Uh, yes, uh, we are still planning our uh, environmental fair on October 22nd, where we will be borrowing some space from Mr. Fletcher. Thank you very much. Um, and also, I wanted to draw your attention to there's an ECB, they wrote a memo uh, supporting the conservation team's uh, memo as well. Um, Regarding their support of the uh, 3950 category 16 purchase. All right. Uh, Shauna, anything from the CSC? Um, not at this time. Okay. All right. Um, I will. Uh, Chairman DiCarlo is not here, but I will speak for the Ag Committee. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen signs if you've driven anywhere in the town around the town of Canandaigua, you have seen uh, very exciting billboards up for Fun on the Farm, which is at Faba Farms, uh, the Nope Farm on uh, Cooley Road, where Bob is one of the managers of the farm. So on the 24th, which is a Saturday, 
uh, fun activities uh, for farm life and experience. And they open the farm up for anybody who wants to see it and see how they run things and sample some of the goods and uh, should be uh, should be a fun event. Uh, and it doesn't happen very often. So we're fortunate to have it uh, so close to us right here in the town. Uh, Karen, anything for the cemetery committee? I do. You do? Okay. Yes, do. Um, we met on Saturday at Hong Cemetery. Um, I just want to publicly recognize the people who came out to volunteer to drag Buckthorn out of the hedgerow. Chainsaws, clippers, you name it. We had it. Uh, so the committee members who were there were Mary Schneider, Judy York, Dave Stone, myself, and then Kate Silverstone Jensen, Ray Henry, Barb Henry, Dennis Brewer, Dr. Marion, Jim Benet, and we here to sell. Nice. We were all there for almost three hours. Yeah. Everyone works. It was awesome. amazing. So that's an hour of sound. Thank you all so much for doing that. And I hope that the highway department drives it all away. Um, if they haven't yet. First <laughs> effort. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm sure Lindsay would be lucky to have a short picture. Probably, yeah, let's probably talk offline on that one. <laughs> Um, and then uh, project teams reports uh, are included in there uh, in, in the budget. Uh, sorry, not in the budget, in the packet. Uh, Karen, if you are here, do you have anything else to add in addition? Just that uh, we have another meeting scheduled for this Friday um, and engineering development. And we have another meeting scheduled for Friday at Stone. We'll be speaking about some of the Okay, thank you. All right, takes us to the next privilege of the floor. Is there anyone who would like to be heard? Mr. Casey. Do you need me to go up to the microphone or do you think I speak loud enough for uh, can, As long as people online can hear you. Anybody cannot hear Mr. Casey? You did speak up when you spoke last time. They said they couldn't hear you. They could not hear me. One of you to speak here. It's one. There we go. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. There you go. Now you're mobile. And got the wireless mic. So there I go. I hope they can all hear me now. Um, John Casey, 3814 County Road 16. Uh, I thought that the um, city presentation was, uh, was good. I think we all appreciate their services. They do a great job. And uh, I can just say from my own personal experience that uh, they were the first ones on the site when I got hurt, and uh, I owe them a world of gratitude and thanks for that. Um, but I do think there are some comments that I'd like to make, which the town board should take into consideration uh, when evaluating the contribution to their budget. Uh, and I think Terry brought up a good point relative to the number of calls versus uh, the number of calls that they service with Canandaigua, the town of Canandaigua, versus the total number of calls that they make. And uh, that percentage is somewhere around 22 or 23 percent versus the 28 percent that uh, I believe they are basing on total property assessments. That part was a little unclear as we sat in the audience. Um, I also was not sure as I sat in the audience who ends up paying for the updates and the maintenance at fire station two and the fact that fire station two is owned by the town and is i think given to the city uh, for no cost should be considered into the equation uh, i'm not again sure what that formula was that was used to arrive at the 28 percent um I also think that a breakdown of the different types of calls, which comprise the 500 versus comprise the 2200, would be valuable information in assessing the risk. Uh, because I did hear the risk be mentioned by the fire chief and by the um, city manager. And uh, I think having a breakdown of the types of calls for each area would be helpful. And I'm also not sure how the city fire department's EMT services 
work in conjunction with the Canandaigua Emergency Services that um, we get? You know, is there some overlapping there of the services between those two organizations? Um, my guess is probably so. And uh, maybe there is some way that that can become more efficient response or operation uh, with the goal of maybe uh, making it more efficient, making it more cost effective. And uh, another consideration may be the number of structures in the town versus the number of structures that are in the, the city. Um, again, that might help evaluate the risk uh, that the fire department experiences. So I hope that's helpful and thank you for your time. Anybody else would like to be heard at this time? All right, seeing no hands, takes us to resolutions and motions. Uh, resolution number 228, acceptance of the monthly financial reports. I'll uh, welcome that resolution. Second. Okay, I move and second at any discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, resolution 229, acknowledgement and authorization of budget transfers by the town manager. Moved. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Resolution 230, authorizing a budget transfer in the Canandaigua Consolidated Water District for emergency repairs on Kramer Road. So moved. I'll second it. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, Jim, do you want to add anything to that? Your crews were doing a great job. Yeah, working over, yeah, the, over yeah, the weekend. The water break two weeks ago. Uh, this is to reimburse the highway for labor and equipment. We fixed the road, paved the road, stone, and for that rupture, she took out a fair amount of stone and road with it. So we put it back together. All right. Thank you guys for all of your time out there doing that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Resolution 231, authorizing the town manager to close the Canandaigua, Canandaigua Consolidated Water District Capital Improvement Project. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Resolution 232, acknowledgement of receipt of the tentative budget declaration of preliminary budget of the town of Canandaigua for the year 2023 and establishment of public hearings. So moved. Second. Any discussion? And well, this just accepts the budget at the budget workshops and the public hearing. We'll have further discussion on the budget. Um, and at that time, we will be going through it in more detail. Tonight is just to recognize that we received it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. And I would like to thank the staff, all the staff for the time and effort Put it put into the budget process uh, because it is a uh, it's a daunting task every year. It takes a lot of time, takes a lot of resources, uh, a lot of wants, uh, and a lot of um, frank discussions need to be had uh, to get us where we are. And we all appreciate that. Resolution two thirty three: Seeker determination of non significance and adoption of local law to amend the town code chapter one seventy four, chapter two twenty in chapter one uh, through 17 relating to subdivision of land and zoning definitions. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Eugene, number eight. Number eight. Uh, resolution 234, appointment of finance clerk two. So moved. I'll second it. Move and second. And any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, resolution 235, acceptance of the Town of Canandaigua Planning Board 2022 annual, re annual report. Move. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? It's very well written. I'm going to yes. have to use that as a, yeah, <laughs> as use that a, as a, template. As a template for my future. Yes. Course. I'd like to thank um, Chairman Euler for all his. his Work on that. Uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Resolution 236 
236, accepting MRB group quote to prepare a preliminary engineering report for the proposed County Road 28 sewer district and authorizing town manager to execute documents. So moved. Second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, carries. Resolution 237, approving amended bylaws of Canandaigua Local Development Corporation. So moved. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? We discussed this. Uh, Finance Committee meeting last week and uh, being a member of the uh, group, I really don't see the need to expand it to uh, seven or nine people. I think that everybody that desires a chance to speak, there's relatively few people that do show up to comment on anything that's on the agenda. Um, they're allowed to do that. It's, it's kind of a very open uh, discussion. So. Adding more people, I don't think, is really going to change the uh, um, course, the direction for the, uh, the LDC. So I, myself, am not in favor of increasing the number of people. I think it's currently very balanced, too. You have yeah. two two people from each of the funding and partners. Yeah. I mean, the three entities are well represented, I think. And others come in, even though they're not members. Um, they speak their piece, they're heard, they listen to publicly. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say everything that I've seen is very open, very open and very public and very transparent in all the actions yeah. that are taken. It can be attributed to the current president. Um, I wasn't gonna go that far. I wasn't gonna cross that line, but I will not, not confirm nor will I deny that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion does not carry. Uh, resolution 230. Uh, forgot to check out. All right, 238, accepting the easement related to the retreat at Center Point LLC and directing the town manager to sign said easements and further directing the town clerk to record said easements at the Ontario County Clerk's office. Hello? I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? So how much closer to how much closer does this get us? <laughs> how far can you jump? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting there. The Auburn Trail continues to move along slowly, but we're getting there. We're inch oh, by inch. listen, we're getting let's it's not how fast, it's where you end up at the end, right? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. 239, authorization for the town of Canandaigua, town manager to sign stormwater control facilities maintenance agreement for the retreat at Center Point, LLC. Hello. I'll second it. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? I might have missed something. Why, why are we speaking that on? Um, that's the requirement that yeah. we yeah. do those. So what we do is the uh, stormwater management facilities agreement actually requires the land the owner responsible for the maintenance, but if for some reason they fail to provide that maintenance, we go and do it and they charge it for it. Thank you. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. Uh, resolution 240, authorization to proceed with mixed use zoning referral to planning board for advisory report. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? So I, I brought this up in finance as well. Um, I, have reser I mean, I know this is just referring this to the planning board, but I have reservations because uh, I know we've discussed the uh, need to expand potentially industrial zoning in the area. Um, I'm a little concerned about um, reducing the industrial zoning in that area. Um, I know I've got a lot of industrial questions in that right. parcel as well, so. Right, and like we, we have talk talked Previous times, and sometimes it's not always on. It's not always clear. Um, sending this, and this is for everyone. Sending this to the planning board is not a stamp of approval for the town board. It's not our, you know, it's not our our blessing. It's just the procedure to get it to the planning board, and then it comes back to us for a further um, further review. So, the developer, anybody else, can't construe that as a as a as an approval for it. 
Um, but I do, and that's something that we can, as, as it comes back, definitely look at. And I think the planning board, looking at our minutes, can take a look at that as well. Tennessee, where they are with their advisory report, and it's a valid concern. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carries. You are an aye, right? Okay. All right. That brings us to the end of our resolutions. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from August 15th? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussions or changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes are approved. Okay, payment of the bills. Jean, could you go through the bills? Certainly. Utility abstract dated August 29th, 2022, totaling $9,471.16. The general fund of $7,725.10. Water districts of $1,746.06. Town board abstract dated September 12th, 2022, totaling $246,000. Nine hundred, I'm sorry, four hundred ninety-six dollars and sixteen cents. General fund of eighty-six thousand nine hundred four dollars and twenty-nine cents. Highway fund of one hundred and six thousand seven hundred fifty-three dollars and two cents. Capital projects of eight thousand four hundred eighty dollars and fifty cents. Water districts of forty-four thousand three hundred fifty-eight dollars and thirty-five cents. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Can I get a motion to approve the bills? So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Bills will be paid. All right, takes us to the next privilege of the floor. Anyone you would like to be heard? Anyone online like to be heard? Okay, no hands and no hands. Uh, we do not have any other business at this time. One last privilege of the floor. I have just a quick note. Um, if we need an executive session for the November, I was on the November 21st meeting, I'd love to have it before on November 21st rather than after. Okay. So, I make a note, I can make a note of that. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh. All right. Anybody else like to be heard from privilege of the floor? There are no executive sessions requested for tonight. Oh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Oh. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.